If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with another budget standard deck for you. Uh, this was inspired by a challenge, it wasn't meant as a challenge, but I took it as one, by one of the kids over at Kapow Comics and Games, one of the LGSs I attend every now and then. And it was, it went something like this, I'm not getting it exactly, I'm sure, but let me paraphrase. Can you come up with a budget standard list that will survive rotation? Because this is a kid, and he doesn't have a whole lot of money to spend. And challenge accepted, I will gladly take that. In fact, this is basically a block deck. So, two birds with one stone. Here's a block deck, and a standard deck. Except one card in the sideboard, I should know. But otherwise, yeah, so let's get started. It is Mono Waste, or Mono Colorless, Eldrazi. It is all centered around this card. Walker of the Waste, this is what makes it a budget deck, right? Not in and of itself, although it is obviously fairly cheap, but it gets plus one, plus one for each land I control named Waste, which means that we're going to play a lot of Waste, which are basics, and basics are cheaper than non-basics. So that's where we're getting a lot of the budget for this deck from. Uh, actually, you're, we'll put you where you are in curve, I guess. Uh, so, 4-4, four, four, hopefully a 9-9 nine, nine on turn 5, if we're getting it out on curve with just lands, but we do have some ramp. Next we have Eldrazi Mimic, because it's an Eldrazi deck. Uh, our little 2-mana 4-4, four, four, uh, just off that. Well, it's it's a 2-mana two 2-1, two worst case scenario, so it'll trade with something in a lot of matches. Otherwise it just gets bigger, and it kind of has pseudo-haste. Uh, not really. Um, it gives other creatures pseudo-haste, I should say. You cast your Walker of the Waste, this becomes a 4-4, four, four, and then swings. That's maybe a bad example, because Walker of the Waste is a 9-9 nine, nine at that point. Um, I don't know, Thought Not Seer. 4-4, four, four, swing. Even if the Thought Not Seer can't, this will on its behalf. So that's always nice to be able to have. Next we have Matter Reshaper, because value. 3-mana, uh, 3-2, three three so eh, not great. But, but, uh, when it dies, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a permanent, not a non-land permanent, a permanent CMC3 or less, put it on the battlefield, otherwise in your hand. So either way, you're getting a card. If it's a land, you just ramped. If it's a few of the other cards we have in here, you'll still ramp. Uh, I'm running next. If you're doing the very budget version, there's Pilgrim's Eye. This is obviously not something you want to run most of the time, but it's not strictly worse than Thought Not Seer, which is what I would run instead if I could. If, if you're running less of a budget, run Thought Not Seer. Uh, Pilgrim's Eye does fly, so it does block on that front. You're not usually attacking with it, though. Uh, it does not ramp you, but it goes and gets you uh, a waste, which helps you if you, don't, if you don't have any more lands. This just helps you to get through that part of the game. Now you can make it four. Uh, but, yeah, generally you're wanting Thought Not Seer. Just, you want to strip their hand of whatever cards... Throw you out of the way. <laughs> uh, they might have to disrupt you. And it's a 4-4 body. So that's where you want to be generally instead. Pilgrim's Eye is just more budget. Right now, Thought Not Seer is still not as cheap as we would like for it to be. Uh, you can work your way towards it using Pilgrim's Eye in the meantime. And next we run... Reality Smasher. 5-5 five, five for 5, Trample, Haste, uh, more difficult to remove. Obviously, Languish won't work on it, Grasp of Darkness won't work on it, most damage-dealing spells in the format right now that are actually seeing play won't work on it. Uh, two for ones with cards like, uh, what's it, Ruinous Path, Murder, uh, you, you get the idea. It's, it's pretty tricky to remove. And it turns Mimic into a 5-5. Five, five. Easy enough, what can I say? Uh, these are all four ups, but our next one of, our next is a one of, it is Endbringer. Untaps during each player's untap step, so obviously it untaps during yours, that's how that works. Uh, but it also says each other player's untap step as well. And then it has three tap activated abilities on it. Uh, no mana, deals one damage to target creature or player, that's awesome. 
It's only one damage, but that's fine. Uh, target creature can't attack or block this turn, so it has a little passivism for one mana. And then for two, draw a card. Yeah, that seems pretty good in the control matches. This is a curve topper, it's another 5-5. Five five. It just gives you some inevitability against the control decks. Uh, you can attack and block and still be able to get something else out of it. So that's always very nice. It's versatility. If you're paying six mana, you ought to be getting something out of it, and this deck certainly does. Now, this is all really high curve, isn't it? We are running Hedron Crawler as a four of to help us ramp just a bit. This is this deck's uh, Leaf Gilder, I think it's called. Just two mana, adds one mana, easy enough. Uh, it's only colorless, but that's fine. It is a 0-1, and it's not an Eldrazi, though. That does come up every now and then. And next we have Hedron Archive. Four mana, adds two colorless. But, in the later game, when I don't need it for mana anymore, pay two and tap it, sacrifice it, draw two cards. So, it helps to get us out of the, uh, the doldrums in which we might find ourselves later in the game. Uh, that's always very nice. Not quite inevitability, it's not to that point but it does give us something to do when we would be hitting just lands or when we're in bad top deck mode. Or if they've raft our board and we need to find ourselves a way back into the game. Uh, next I'm running Warping Whale. Such a good card, such an underrated card in standard right now. Every mode is is good. Uh, every mode is situational at worst, right? Exile target creature with power or toughness one or less. So obviously in the Coco decks that doesn't stop too too much these days. Uh, but it's important to note that it does stop Jace, and as long as Jace VP is in the format, we'll need that. And it does exile, so indestructible won't matter. For I think it's called Selfless Spirit, uh, the the two mana one that Coco decks are playing that sacks itself to give indestructible. Uh, counter target sorcery spell. I mean, there's a reason why invasive surgery is seeing play in sideboards now, and we have it in our main board, so that's all right. That's good. But what we really care about is that let's say neither of those first two modes matter. Let's say that we're not running against. We're running against collected company. It's bank company. They don't have any small enough creatures for it, uh, and Coco is an instant, not a sorcery. Worst case scenario, we play it, make the scion, make the one one scion and then we ramp ourselves. So that's why I like it so much in this deck. It gives us that mana. If we don't get the crawler, if we don't get the mimic, we still have a two turn or a turn two play that ramps us. So that's always good, I think. Uh, next we're running Spatial Contortion. So this is just another removal spell. Plus three, minus three to target creature until end of turn. Importantly, in this deck, the minus three usually will not kill our creatures. It will kill Matter Reshaper. I guess in some situations you may want to do that, but usually not. Uh, Mimic, it shouldn't kill later in the game, but Thought Not Seer is good. Reality Smasher is good. Walker is good. Endbringer is good. Hedron Crawler, no. Just no. <laughs> but otherwise, this should pump your creatures and kill your opponent's creatures. Now, also note that it's an instant. So, okay, you didn't block. Pump my creature. Maybe that'll give you lethal every now and then. And the one non-basic land in the list, the one, is Ruins of Orin Reef. And that's because this does, in a way, serve sort of the same purpose. That was a lot of alliteration, wasn't it? Uh, comes in tapped, and it has to tap in order to put the plus one, plus one counter on a colorless creature that enters the battlefield this turn. So if this were a waste, it would just be plus one, plus one to Walker of the Waste. Uh, the opportunity cost is lost in that case. It doesn't come in tapped, and we don't have to effectively spend one extra mana uh, to cast the creature to give it the plus one plus one counter. Say, in the case of Walker the Waste, five mana to cast it, plus one from Ruins, uh, tapping it to give it the counter. That would make it the same. However, Ruins will also work on all of our other creatures. So it will work on Walker a decent amount of the time, while also buffing the rest of our creatures. I think that's worth it. It's not a waste, but it still can pump our walker. It's fairly cheap still, uh, and it pumps the rest of our creatures as well. So I think that on those bases, uh, it merits inclusion in the deck. And that's our main board. So it's four ofs for all of these except Endbringer, and then four ofs for all of these. 
uh, yeah, so this is a land. So if we just look at this, we're talking 37 non-lands, 23 lands. The, the other 19 are waste, of course. And onto the sideboard really quickly. Uh, we are running, so against mid-range decks, we're running Gruesome Slaughter. This is our one-sided Wrath. Six mana, it is sorcery speed though, so that's important. Until end of turn, uh, colorless creatures I control gain tap. They don't fight other creatures, they simply deal damage equal to their power to target creature. That's awesome. That's why I say it's one-sided. Now, again, six mana and sorcery speed. The six mana isn't as bad of a deal as you might think because of the ramp in this deck, but it is sorcery speed, so against Coco decks, this isn't great. They'll just end of turn Coco, get out two creatures, and we're back to not being in a great shape. So, mid-range decks only. For the aggro decks, we have something else we bring in. Uh, I should also note that there are two inbringers in the sideboard as well. We bring them in against control. They just give us a little bit of inevitability by drawing us a card and being able to attack and block. Uh, drawing us a lot of cards, potentially. Uh, also, while we're on talking about control, a Kozilek the Great Distortion. Uh, this can just draw you seven cards in a game. You're playing against the control player. They're wrathing your board. They're keeping you down. Uh, so you're, you still have ramp to be able to get up to 10 mana in a reasonable control game, because they're giving you that time. Uh, you have Hedron Crawler, you have Hedron Archite. You do still have Warping Whale to make Scion tokens. Um, if you can make it that far, Kozilek just gives you the most inevitability. It draws you 7 cards. It's a 12-12 menace. If they counter it, they, you still draw those cards. And we're talking about something that has built-in counterspell on it. So that's really saying something in this deck. And you'll notice that there's a decent amount of variety uh, in the curve here. Two, three, four, five, five, six, three if we have Pilgrim's Eye, two, four, two, two. You can stop an awful lot in this deck. Uh, but it's only one of, it's legendary, and it doesn't break any match. Uh, we have, this is our one non-block card in the deck. We run four orbs of warding. This is what we use against aggro decks, partially because it stops burn entirely, right? We have hexproof now. And also against tokens, against burn decks, against um, oh, humans that blow to the ground human decks, against allies. Being able to prevent one damage from each creature that would deal damage to you can just be huge. Um, now it only works on you, not your creatures as well, but that's obviously, uh, it, it, it negates always watching, just gives you a pillow for it, it gives you a bit of cushion. Hopefully they don't have anything that's making it where their creatures are getting bigger. If they don't, congrats, you're not taking any damage. Otherwise, you're probably, there's a Gideon emblem out, there's always watching, there's Thalia's lieutenant, something is making them bigger, this will just negate some of that. Titan's Presence, for when you just need more spot removal. Uh, if you notice, there's a 5 power, 4 power, uh, 5 power, 4 power, 3 power, 2 power. Uh, Titan's Presence will, with some frequency, just kill a creature. I also can bring this in against uh, decks that are running a lot of uh, land folk. So if they're, say, Orzhov Control, they have uh, Shambling Vents. I keep forgetting, just... It is Shambling Vents, right? I'm not crazy? Okay. Uh, this just gives you an instant speed removal spell against them. Because Warping Whale won't work. Um, spatial Contortion will. This just gives you something else that you can do. Exile it. You get the idea. Very nice. Uh, that's a four of. And then, against Control as well, we have one Ulamog with Ceaseless Hunger. It's inevitability. Even if they counter it, we're hitting their lands or hitting... Per, you know, planeswalkers, whatever we need to keep them from winning or get ourselves back in the game. It's just a one of though, because it's legendary on its own, it doesn't really break any particular match, but it is indestructible, so it gets around wraths. It presents an extremely quick clock, even if it's blocked. This is just a great card, but it's so high on curve, we don't bring it in against most decks. That's it. This is what I'm running right now. This is the 75. It for a budget deck. I actually think that this does pretty well. Getting out a 9-9, 10-10, 11-11, Walker of the Waste.
can be surprising to a lot of decks, and you have enough ramp that you can get there in a lot of games. The problem is keeping yourself alive until then. Uh, decks that can just poke you down too quickly, or the uh, the Coco decks or the mid-range decks in general that can compete with you on that front can give you some issues, absolutely. Reflector Mage is a problem for the deck, without a doubt. Uh, but otherwise, this deck actually has, for a budget deck, I think it does really well. I would consider it FM, FNM playable, uh, not Pro Tour playable, but take something like this to your FNM. You'll have a deck that you can actually keep through rotation, and I'm sure in Kaladesh, uh, you'll be able to find something to replace Orbs of Warding, or maybe you have another idea for something that could go in there. Uh, there is one card I want to talk about really quickly before I let this end, and that is, why are you not running Stoneforge Masterwork? And that's a good question. You can run Stoneforge Masterwork, especially if you're running the Pilgrim's Eye version, though. You don't have Thought Knots here. There just aren't as many Eldrazi in the deck as I would like for there to be. Uh, let's see, we're running 21 Eldrazi, and that's not plus potentially some more from Warping Whale Scion tokens. That's fine, that's doable, uh, and maybe you want to run Stoneforge Masterwork as a result of that. Go right on, have at it, Haas. I don't know what to take out for it, though. It does give you something you can play on turn one, though, so I'm looking at this, the more I see it, to me it just barely doesn't make the cut, but I'm gonna be honest. We have eight Trample Creatures in the deck, we have four Reality Smashers, four Walker of the Waste. This could just be insane, but I'm looking at it and going, we only have 21 Eldrazi and most of them are pretty high curve, so they're coming out kind of slowly. I'm not swarming the field like an Allies deck or Humans deck would. It just doesn't, to me, look like it's the right home. But feel free to disagree if you want to try it out, try it out for yourself, especially if there's a card in here you just can't afford right now. Also, uh... <laughs> replaces Orbs of Warding. Done! But now it's fully a block deck. We're good, we're good. We don't have anything to bring in against really low to ground aggro, but then again, Orbs of Warding is five mana anyway. In any standard other any format other than standard, excuse me, uh, that just would be too slow. Standard and block, that's five mana is about as far as you can get. Uh, since we have some ramp, since we have a lot of lands, 23 for a mid-range deck that's right about where you want to be, I think we can get there, and this gives you something against the burn decks too. But hey, Stoneforge Masterwork would make it a block deck, right? <laughs> Alright, so that's it. I will see you later. Take care, Magic Community. Bye-bye.